Have you ever been in a relationship where you break up and then make up, only to break up and make up again and again and again? I work with couples where one or both of the partners are struggling with issues of pathological narcissism. So this is a pattern that I see quite a lot of. In this video, I'm going to talk about some simple strategies that can be implemented to bring more security in the relationship and either help the couple to commit to working things through and to being together or bringing the relationship to a permanent, stable end. Now, these are simple strategies, but they are difficult to implement, so please don't think I'm suggesting that this is easy. Now, the first thing I want you to understand is the difference between reactive breaking up and planned breaking up. In a planned breakup, we make a decision from our healthy, wisest, most compassionate grown-up self. We have thought through the pros and the cons of the relationship, the good aspects of it, as well as the difficult or upsetting and distressing aspects of it. We thought through the pros and cons of the relationship. We thought about the aspects of the relationship that we love and appreciate, as well as the aspects of the relationship that we don't like or that are hurtful and harmful to us. We've also thought through what it would be like to leave the relationship we've given some consideration to living arrangements, to shared financial arrangements, and what it would be like to disentangle those. And also, we thought about the impact on any children or family within the relationship and how that might look. Now, you may not have all the answers, but you've certainly thought through some of the things that you're going to need to consider. And generally, this is a decision that's made with a level of calm. And generally, if you're making a decision to break up, there may be uncertainty and there may be questioning. There's often a lot of grief and anxiety and even anger and resentment. But the decision itself is one that is measured and considered and is made out of concern for yourself, the other person and anyone else that this affects. It's a decision made from a place of genuine compassion, particularly for yourself, and that you're making a decision that is truly in your best interest. Now, a reactive breakup is completely different. It sounds more like F off, we're done. It's the decision that you make in the heat of an argument. And who's making that decision? The chances are it is not your wisest, sturdiest, healthiest grown-up self. It may be an angry, enraged, younger part of you. It may be a very defensive part of you that's angry and very protective of you. Those are coping modes and those parts of you don't tend to make wise, compassionate and considered decisions. And then what happens further down the line? Well, in the heat of an argument, you're focusing in on all the things about your partner that you really don't like. The ways they've hurt you, the ways they've harmed you, the habits that you don't like. Everything about them is wrong and bad, annoying and enraging. And you may also be engaging in some wonderful fantasies about how amazing it would be to be free from this terrible relationship. Now, later on, when you calm down, reality may start to bite. You may start to think about all of the aspects of leaving a relationship that are very stressful and difficult, disentangling shared living arrangements, finances, navigating the challenges of childcare and family life, if that's relevant to you. You may also start to reflect that whilst your partner may have behaved in ways that are very hurtful to you, you may also have aspects of the relationship and your partner that you genuinely like, love and appreciate. And so the chances are that you and your partner, who's probably going through a similar process, will come back together and will make a decision to make up again. Now, the problem with these kinds of threats to leave a relationship is that they create a lot of insecurity in the relationship. And this is especially relevant in relationships where there are issues of narcissism. Very often, both parties in this relationship struggle with relational anxiety and they struggle with a fear of abandonment. The person who's in a relationship with a narcissist, who may also be narcissistic themselves, it's not necessarily either or, but they may be struggling with anxiety about themselves. They may be feeling very criticized and small. They may be feeling very hurt and wounded. They may be lacking in self-esteem and self-confidence. And they may have felt those things before they got into this relationship, or they may have developed these things within that relationship because they've been subject to a lot of criticism or condescension or 
or neglect in the relationship. And threats to leave tend to exacerbate all of the anxiety that goes along with that. Now, the same is true for the partner who's narcissistic. People who are narcissistic usually have a deep fear of abandonment, a fear of rejection, of being alone. Remember, they look to others to tell them that they're okay. They look to others to give them validation and self-esteem. So a threat to end the relationship can feel absolutely humiliating, annihilating, and extremely distressing. Are they going to show that? Absolutely not, because that would be humiliating and it would make them vulnerable. Because as well as having a deep-rooted fear of abandonment, most people who are highly narcissistic also have a big fear of being abused and hurt, often because of very painful childhood experiences. Now, when you fear being abused, hurt, taken advantage of, humiliated, and scorned, how do you respond when your partner is threatening to leave? Well, you don't sit back, reflect, and engage your healthy grown-up self to reflect on the situation. Oh, hell no. You say, well, I never cared about you anyway. I never loved you. So a narcissistic person in this setting may become very withdrawn, may become very cold, may express not valuing their, their partner. And as a result, their partner feels even more neglected and abandoned, and that escalates threats to leave or pleads to stay. Now, it may also be that a narcissistic person will become enraged at threats to leave a relationship. They may shift the blame onto their partner for any failings in the relationship that may be their fault and their responsibility, because to admit their own mistakes would be to admit weakness vulnerability, and flaws. And a narcissistic person is driven to not show those things because they fear being seen as ordinary, normal, and flawed. And they have to build that strong image to maintain the idea that they are okay in the world, that they are a good person, that they are a good partner, and that the problem is all the other persons. Now, both a narcissistic person and their partner may be making threats to leave the relationship. Either way, both parties are ramping up the level of anxiety and fear of abandonment within the relationship. And nobody is bringing their healthy, wisest, most compassionate adult on board to work through the conflict and figure things out. And in that high conflict setting, which part of you is going to get back together? Probably not your wisest, most compassionate part that's reflecting on the situation and weighing everything up. No, it's probably the wounded, more vulnerable part of you that feels deeply hurt, feels very frightened, feels abandoned, and is looking to this relationship for validation, for security, for self-esteem for safety, to fulfill a fantasy of ideal love. And so that vulnerable part of you will likely be the part of you that wants to get back into this relationship. So what can you do? Well, here is one strategy that I suggest to every couple I work with who are struggling with this kind of issue. This is difficult to implement, but the principle is straightforward. And that is that you commit to no reactive breakups. No threats to leave the relationship even and in fact, especially in situations where there's a high level of conflict. And what that does is it really encourages both parties to find their more healthy selves. It requires both of them to take responsibility to take care of themselves and the relationship and also to take care of any possible future breakup to make sure it's a planned and considered breakup by not bringing threats to end the relationship into arguments and conflict. And that creates an opportunity for things to calm down and to settle and an environment in which it may be possible to begin to work through some of this conflict more constructively. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you stay in the room and that you continue a heated conversation. It may be that both of you need to recognize we're not communicating at our best right now. We're getting very reactive. We're getting very defensive. We're getting very attacking. And you give yourself the opportunity to go away and calm yourself down, reconnect with your more healthy grown-up self and come back when you're more able to navigate that conflict. 
Now, for some people, you may need the help of a couples therapist to do this, but the principle is the same. You may need to take time apart, not because you're leaving your partner, not because you're abandoning them, but because you're creating space to re-engage with your healthy self so you can resolve the conflict much more calmly and much more successfully and without creating more relational anxiety. In fact, the opposite, you're creating a sense of relationship security and you're actually learning how to repair ruptures. Now, remember that we know from the research that couples who are happy and secure and have a high level of relationship satisfaction also have conflict and they don't necessarily have less conflict than other couples. What they do have is an ability to repair ruptures, the ability to disagree, to have arguments, to have conflict and to come together and restore the relationship. And committing to not engaging in reactive breakups gives you the best chance of being able to do that. Now, that is not to say that staying in this relationship is going to be always the best outcome. But by committing to not having reactive breakups, you may need to take time and space to reflect seriously on whether or not this is a good relationship for you to be in. And you may need to weigh up the pros and cons, what it would be like to stay in this relationship, what it would be like to leave this relationship, and really come to a decision from a place of compassion and concern for yourself and also for your partner and anyone else who would be affected by your breakup, such as your children, in order to come to a wise, steady, and compassionate decision to bring the relationship to an end in as calm and constructive a way as possible. That's not to say it won't hurt. It's not to say that there won't be lots of guilt or fear or anger or resentment or that things are going to go smoothly. But I think if you're making the decision to end the relationship from that place of consideration and concern and compassion for yourself and other people who are affected, including your partner, you're much more likely to be able to bring the relationship to a secure and permanent end. I hope this video has been helpful. I'd love to hear what you think, so leave a comment, hit the like button, subscribe or follow if you'd like to hear more from me. I look forward to seeing you next time. In the meantime, take good care.